Um, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. I just found some spiritual medicine for one of the biggest problems in our society right now. And it's just like, it's so simple, but really it just blew my mind, guys. I cannot tell you how awesome this is. And I'm just so excited to share with you. So let us pray before we start. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sharing this revelation with me. I'm just so awestruck of how carefully you have designed everything and how you have designed us to be God. Um, we're just now figuring out the science behind things. And I love that science, it just proves and points toward you, God. You are the creator and creation just obeys you, God. Thank you for this word. I pray that whoever struggles with anxiety, they will receive this word and they will have medicine for their ailments, God. Please give me the words to say and send this message to whoever needs it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. <sighs> okay, I'm so excited. If you've been catching up on my channel, one of the recent videos I posted is about transforming your mind. And I just have another element to add on to that. It's not that much, but it... <sighs> It's just so cool to me. It's so cool to me. We're going to be talking a little bit about brain science and neurology. So I am so stoked. You guys know I am a scientist. Something of a scientist myself. So this is just so awesome to me. One of our key verses is Romans chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I just want to read part of verse 2 once again. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And now we are going to quickly flip into Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 from the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Amen. So, um, I think we all know this, but there is an anxiety and depression epidemic happening in Gen Z. And I think in other generations as well, but it's very, it's very evident in my generation, Gen Z. There's so many studies that say Gen Z is the most anxious, the most depressed generation of ever. And this, it, it does not sit right with me. It does not sit right with me. I don't know how you feel about anxiety, medication, and antidepressants and all of that, but regardless of your feelings toward those things and regardless of if you need them and you take them, I just want to present to you, submit to you another medicine. And I would say this is some spiritual medicine right here, straight from God. Again, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Anxiety is a normal emotion. It exists. Fear and anxiety, they exist because they are to protect us, to keep us from harm so that we can survive. It is a survival thing. It is a good thing. However, excessive, persistent anxiety is not okay. There are so many studies where it shows that 
negative thinking can actually like kill you physically. It can kill you emotionally and physically. There are so many research articles and journals and publications out there that people who live with anxiety and um, just like this negative thinking and trauma, you can increase your rate of cardiovascular disease. You can give yourself a heart attack. You can decrease the lifespan due to stress, over like excessive stress, toxic stress. You'll be more likely to break your bones even. There's just so many things I'm gonna share with you on the screen here. But Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, he gives us a, a solution to one of their problems and one of our biggest problems in our society today. There is spiritual medicine right here. And I really wanna underline the part in verse 6, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Thanksgiving is the attitude we need to have when we come to God in prayer and we when we come to God. And just like um, in life in general, it's just an attitude that we need to adopt more. And I'm not here to preach toxic positivity, but I'm, I'm just sharing you the science and what the Bible says. Okay, hear me out. A fact of neurology, which is the study of the brain, a fact of brain science is that you cannot be in a state of appreciation and a state of anxiety at the same time. The two states are mutually exclusive. They cannot coexist at the same time. This is because gratitude and anxiety, they occur in the same region of our brain. It's called the amygdala, which is the place that is in charge of our emotions. And when this region is activated, you cannot be both appreciative and anxious. You can only be one or the other or some other emotion, but you cannot be appreciative or anxious at the same time. They cannot coexist together because it's happening at the same spot. So it's either or. And this is just so cool to me because we know that negative thinking, it just destroys your life. It creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. If I keep telling myself, I amount to nothing, I'm a failure, I will go out there and amount to nothing and be a failure. But if I'm telling myself and I'm renewing my mind saying, I'm blessed and highly favored, I am chosen, I am called by God, I am a daughter of God. Wow. <laughs> and I walk out there thinking I'm blessed and highly favored and I'm chosen and I'm called, can you imagine the difference? Your brain is so powerful, but it is so tricky sometimes because our, our feelings can overwhelm us. I just wanted to say that not every thought that enters your brain, that enters your head is from you. The enemy, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and to distort, and to plant doubt into our heads. Not everything that comes to you in your head is from you. Those can be lies. Instead of dwelling in those lies, as I often did, and just dwelling in the sadness and anxiety, you need to renew your mind. Like what Roman says, do not conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can test and approve of what God's will is. If you're not renewing your mind and you believe that every single thought, every single thing that comes to you and you just keep dwelling in it like, oh my goodness, I am so unloved. No one loves me. I love people more than they love me. Guess what? That's going to happen. <laughs> not because it's true, but because your brain, it cannot accept your reality and your inner thoughts not making sense. Something called cognitive dissonance. Your brain hates it, so your brain will morph itself into whatever your reality is or whatever you think your reality is. So if your reality is that you're so unloved, no one loves you, your brain is going to believe that story and gonna, it's going to look for evidence that you're unloved and no one loves you. But on the other side, there's so much hope. I think it's so cool because our brain is actually very malle malleable. It's very like plastic. There's this term called neuroplasticity. And basically what that means is that your brain can change 
based on however you train it. And as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. There's little cells called neurons, which connect and send signals to one another. However you normally do things, the more, let's say like every morning I wake up and I make myself some coffee. My brain is going to keep remembering that because every day I do the same thing. It's going to build the pathway in this section of my brain to be very wide. In the same way, if my go-to is to like cry and self-doubt about how terrible my life is and how I'm so doomed, that pathway is going to be very built. <laughs> it's going to be built. However, that's not the end. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task or choose a different emotion. We start carving out a new road. If we keep traveling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. You can literally change your brain. By changing the way you think or changing the way you act, you can create new pathways in your brain. And whatever pathways, whatever decisions, whatever reactions that you use the most, that pathway in your brain will become the most prominent and the most easy to do. So if I am constantly negatively thinking, and this is what my go-to reaction, that pathway is going to get really strong. But I have the power to retrain my brain, reshape my brain into a more positive, more gratitude filled, more hopeful way of thinking. And if I just keep practicing that, then that more positive thinking pathway will become stronger and therefore easier. It will be wider and more easy for me to follow in that way. The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. That's just so much science. <laughs> That's just so cool to me because be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You literally can transform your literal brain by renewing your mind. With thanksgiving, when you present your request to God, the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds. With thanksgiving, you cannot be anxious anymore. If you have appreciation and gratitude, you cannot be anxious at the same time. It's either or. And all of this all I'm, it just really points to me how God's word is truly alive and active and it's so true and the science, we're just catching up to it. We're just catching up to the things that have been said and written thousands of years ago. It's just so cool to me. So Paul, he's so ahead of this time and this really shows to me how this book, this text is truly Holy Spirit inspired because he gives a way to mitigate anxiety and fear. This is just so cool. You can literally transform your mind into a more positive, more life-giving, more hopeful brain. <laughs> and if you're changing your outlook and you, you truly believe it in your brain, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit that, oh, you know what? I am the daughter of God. God does love me. I'm blessed and highly favored. Life just suddenly, like your eyes open. <laughs> it is so cool to me, the authority that God has. It's so simple, but it just really blew my mind. And I don't know if you are someone that, again, if you struggle with anxiety and you have to take medicine, but I just pray that 
you won't have to rely on this, but you'll just rely on God and his word. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he says is true. And we're just like backing it up like recently. This is recent research. There's just so many things that point to God and how science does not disprove God. If anything, the more I learn in science, the more I just am like blown away by God's glory. He's just so cool. He's just so cool. I'm gonna read the verses another time. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And this is a promise right here. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And this is another promise right here. And the God of peace will be with you. When I was younger and I was experiencing anxiety and I didn't have the full context and meaning of this verse, people would often like throw it at me like, don't be anxious about anything, just pray. But it would be like so condescending and hurtful, you know? But just like this extra layer of meaning to this verse with the Thanksgiving part, God is so good. God is so good. I don't know how to say what I what I'm feeling, but it's just become so healing to me. Um, if you haven't watched my last video about transforming your mind, I really recommend you listen to it because I share a little testimony in there and it's so silly goofy. But if God can provide for me for something as simple as a parking spot, you need to watch the video to understand. Something as simple as a parking spot, how much more would he come for me, come through for me for something as big as my purpose? And I, it's just like, it's so, it's like right here, right under my nose. But I, had, I didn't know. I didn't know. And now that I, better understand this and I'm learning about trauma and how to help kids with trauma actually like thrive and learn and the science behind everything is just so cool and it's just like God really thought of everything and he gave us all the tools so why are we why do we continue to live as if we don't have that authority in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. By sacrificing our bodies, this includes our mind. God has already paid the price. Jesus paid it all for us. He wore a crown of thorns that pierced his head so that we could have mental clarity. It's already ours. But we have to work a little bit to get it. We have to transform by renewing our mind. We have to focus on things that we are grateful for and think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Stop dwelling in your self-hate. Stop dwelling in your doubt. Stop dwelling in your unbelief. Stop dwelling in your sadness. You, you are more than allowed to feel those things, but stop dwelling in it. This is not the freedom that God paid for. <laughs> God has so much more for you. You just got to step out into it, out of faith and receive it. <sighs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Let's end in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for this 
powerful word that he's truly like your word just cuts through bone and marrow cuts through soul and spirit it just pierced through my heart god thank you for the authority of your word and how how you come through for me for so many little things and so many big things and i know you're gonna keep coming through for me for so many greater things god i am so sorry for all the times that i and we just we just dwell in our fear and our anxiety because we don't trust you enough i'm so sorry god you did not wear a crown of thorns just for us to be the most anxious the most anxious generation of all time. I know you didn't do that for us to be like this. <laughs> Help us, please God, to live renewed each day, to keep transforming our minds and to stop dwelling in the past, in our hurt, in our heartbreak, God. But to think about the things that are noble, true, pure, right, lovely, excellent, praiseworthy. Help us to keep reminding ourselves of you and who you are, because you are all of these things. I pray over everyone that has a spirit of fear and anxiety and depression, God. In the name of Jesus, there will be healing. In the name of Jesus, there will be life. In the name of Jesus, there will be hope. Thank you, God, for restoring my hope. And I know you're going to come through for everyone who's under the sound of my voice who's believing in you right now, God. We're so sorry for all the times we dwelled in despair when you were loving us the whole time. You already paid the price for us this whole time, God. Please give us the strength to keep renewing, keep transforming each day to be more like you, to be your image bearers, and to help other people transform their lives and be free of anxiety and depression to be free of these ailments god i know that you have so much more for us i also want to pray over anyone who's been hurt by um just like the christian cliches that we always throw out um even though we may mean well and we send these verses sometimes they are just so hurtful and i just they're healing and over everyone who's experienced that and god please continue just to pour out these revelations to us um please keep giving me these science <laughs> science things that prove your existence that prove your authority for other people i don't know maybe it's history or philosophy or logic or something god, but please keep revealing yourself to us we want to know you we want to know you better Thank you again for this word and for for your good promises. And we don't just thank you and seek you because of what you can do for us, but because of who you are. You are the God of hope. You are the God of peace. You are so, you are so good, God. Thank you for being a firm foundation that we can always stand on, for never changing even when everything else in life changes. You never change. Thank you for being someone we can rest firmly and rest securely on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. <laughs> um, I'm sorry for crying. It's just like sometimes I'm just so overwhelmed by how, how good God is. Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. With that said, um, I hope that this bless you as much as it blessed me. I always remind myself of this verse now. It used to hurt me a lot when people would just throw it. But now that I have this deeper understanding, it gives me so much comfort. <laughs> it's so cool. God is so cool. As always, remember to stay humble and be kind. I pray that you will practice more gratitude this week and you will keep transforming your mind. I have a whole document of biblical affirmations that you can use to help transform your mind. Yeah.
every day as a living sacrifice. A sacrifice is a one and done thing, but a living sacrifice is every day. Every day. If anything, I really hope that this encourages you to dig deeper, to dig a little bit deeper. These are verses that I've known my whole life, but digging deeper, like, there's so much, there's so much to unpack. And those are just like a couple of verses, you know? How many verses are in here? <laughs> God is so cool. He just... Scientist! The goat scientist. Thank you, God. <laughs> God bless you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, pray your petition with thanksgiving, present it to God, and He will guard your hearts and your minds with a peace beyond understanding. Amen. Bye. <laughs>